Happy New Year, everybody. Lovely to see you. Um, it's been great already this morning because a lot of the, the things that are on my heart and that I wanted to talk about have already been kind of mentioned in different ways, and particularly Esther just now talking about hope. Um, as I was preparing, I really felt that God led me to one little verse that I want um, to get, be kind of ringing in our ears, really, at the start of this new year. And that is Romans. It's in Romans 12, verse 12, a tiny little verse that says this, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. And I really felt like as I was praying about this and thinking about 2021, that um, that that would be a great verse to have in our heads as we start the new year. Um, so Romans 12, I mean, it's an amazing passage altogether. We've had from Paul the whole, um, his whole exposition of the gospel and all that it means, great theology up to uh, chapter 11. And then in chapter 12 of Romans, Paul kind of says, and so in the light of all this, this is how I want you to live. And there's this great little section. I'm going to read uh, verses 9 to 13. A great little section, pra really practical instructions of how to live. Um, no matter what the circumstances. So whatever is going on around us, and we've mentioned so many different ways that um, the circumstances are uncertain and the things that we're living with have lived through this last year and the things that we may be anticipating or are unsure of in this next year. Um, no matter what is going on around us, Paul says, love must be sincere. <clears throat> Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. And this verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And some of those we don't get to do right at the moment. I think maybe this coming year we're going to be needing to do a bit more of those um, there's things in verse 13, sharing with the Lord's people who are in need as we kind of face maybe some more of the economic consequences of the pandemic and all of that. And then as we come out of it, I think we're going to need to relearn and, and maybe learn for the first time to practice hospitality. I think that's going to be a really big deal after all of this in the new era. But that's for another day. Right now, let's be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. So the first one of those, be joyful in hope. Hope. Um, as Esther just said, hope's kind of something that everybody's kind of grasping for right now, aren't they? It's maybe in, a bit in short supply and people are kind of finding hope where they can. Uh, the Sunday paper I read last weekend, this was the magazine, look. Big Silver Balloons Hope. Where can you find hope in 2021? The things that they came up with in, in, in the newspaper last weekend were um, bringing nature back into farming, Worms that help with anti-aging, um, making cities more green, um, cleaning up the oceans. Uh, you know, there's some great things there, but I, I think when Paul's talking about hope, we, we can go, he, he wants us to look further out and look a lot bigger. The interesting thing about all the things that, that these guys were finding uh, to put their hope in, they're all kind of hints of what Paul wants us to put our hope in. They are hints of this new creation um, that he talks about. And as we look at this verse this morning, I want us to put it in uh, alongside it, Romans 8. You know, um, Romans 8 is an amazing chapter about God's promises and the fact that we can't be separated from his love. But I want to read a bit um, from verse 18 as we think about the hope that we have. Listen to this, Romans 8, verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. And so Paul is saying we have this amazing hope, not that we're going to be, not that we suddenly get transported off, off this earth that's full of 
uh, problems into some ethereal heavenly place and that's our that's what we're looking forward to but actually our hope is that the whole of creation <clears throat> heavens and earth is going to be rebuilt as it will be uh, rebirthed and, and recreated uh, no longer subject to decay no death no pain no suffering but the whole thing uh, liberated from its bondage to decay and that because of the gospel that is our hope it is it encompasses everything and that is what we um in the gospel as christians that's what our, our hope is in at the moment we know don't we that the whole creation paul says is groaning there's all sorts of things because of sin the effects of sin get everywhere and we see it's problems all around us we know the challenges particularly now they're really real to us but our hope is that the whole of creation, heavens and earth, is going to be liberated from this decay. It's going to be liberated from the effects of sin and death and pain and all recreated. And we're part of that. that so creation is waiting for the sons of God, for the children of God, the sons and daughters of God to be revealed as uh, the new creation breaks in on the old. That is our hope. Not right now in vaccines or in things returning to normal or wh whatever things we're grasping at right now, but further out and much bigger that the whole of creation will be released from its bondage to decay. Amen. That That's what our hope is in. And that, the fruit of that, says Paul, is joy. The fruit of biblical hope is joy. So be joyful in that hope today, but also be patient in affliction. The reality is that there will be affliction in this life because the whole of creation is subject to decay, because of the effects of sin, which get every, into everything, there will be affl affliction. And as Christians, we're not separated from those problems. We're not separated from those challenges and those struggles. We're in the thick of it. So continuing on in, in Romans 8 from verse 23, Paul says this, not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our body. So we're waiting for the whole of creation to be liberated. We're waiting for our new bodies. We're waiting to participate fully in this new kingdom that's coming. But in the meantime, we still face the circumstances just like everybody else does. And we groan inwardly uh, as we wait. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So, so Paul says, in the circumstances, in the affliction, affliction, and we've mentioned some of the things already that we're struggling with right now, and different ones of us have been struggling with this last year, whether it be loneliness, whether it be uncertainty about the future, whether it be that we don't know what's going to happen to work, whether it be that we've lost loved ones, uh, and there's all sorts of economic consequences, as I said earlier, to come probably, isn't there, as a result of the pandemic and maybe Brexit as well. Whatever it is, we are subject and we groan. And you know what? Paul says it's OK to groan. It's OK. We need to lament. We need to grieve the things that we struggle with. We need to bring them before God. We're not um, we're not. Um, immune to them we're in them in the same way as everybody else but Paul says because of the hope that you have be joyful but also be patient in this affliction and those that Romans 12 verse 9 and onwards that we just read Paul's one another instructions are so key here aren't they be devoted to one another while we're facing these different afflictions and they'll be at different levels and they'll be different for different ones of us but be devoted to one another honour one another, share with those who are in need. And last year was brought so much good, didn't it, in this area, as we saw people serving one another and caring for one another. It's easy to get fatigued in that. Let's go again in being devoted to one another as we find ourselves groaning at different points with affliction. Let's get alongside one another and be full of compassion and full of love. So be joyful in hope, be patient in affliction, and then Paul's third instruction, be faithful in prayer. We won't get through any of this. We won't do any of it without dependence on God. We, we said that, didn't we, right back at the beginning of the pandemic. Do you remember as we were in Exodus and we talked about the daily manner and needing to go to God every day and be dependent on him 
and lean into him and say, Lord, we need you every day. What is it that you've got for us today? Lord, give us the resources today uh, to get through the circumstances that we face. Um, in Ephesians, let me just read you a bit from Ephesians 1, um, which is a really important prayer. If I can find it, Paul says this in Ephesians 1, I pray, verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. So we actually have to pray to start with that we even know what this hope is, that we understand it, that our hearts will be expanded to get hold of what God has done for us in the gospel. Um, so, and Paul says, be faithful in prayer. In other versions, be constant in prayer. This prayer needs to be habitual. It needs to be disciplined. It's like eating. It's like sleeping. It's like doing our job. It needs to be built in as part of our lives. We can't cope with the affliction, with the circumstances that we face. We can't have the hope that we should that, that God encourages us to have unless we're faithful in prayer. So we need to get before God. And I believe that's such a great call at the start of this year to be faithful in prayer. And so back again to Romans 8 and the next few verses where we read this fascinating little verse at verse 26. In the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So not only is the whole of creation groaning, but we have a hope that it will be liberated from that one day. Not only are we in the midst of that afflicted creation, groaning ourselves and uh, being patient in the affliction that we have right now. But as we come to prayer and being faithful in prayer, we find that not only are we groaning, but actually the spirit groans with us as well. There's some way in which God is not separated from all that's going on. He's right in the thick of it with us. And we find that the spirit is groaning as well. And so even Paul says, as you don't know what to pray because of the things that are going on around you, sometimes you, you don't have the words. And that's so true, isn't it? But it's so key that we get before God and the spirit prays on our behalf and groans with us in the midst of it and enables us not only to stand in the circumstances, but also to know how we're to be and through us to begin to bring in the new creation. So the new creation that is coming comes through his God's people, doesn't it? We are, have the first fruits in the spirit, God says. And so as we're filled with the spirit and as we pray in the spirit and as we groan with the spirit, the new creation begins to be broke to break in in all sorts of different ways. And we get, begin to see the presence of God and his power coming in to circumstances and blessing and enabling and um, being with us in all sorts of different ways. So there's a lot of groaning going on in Romans 8, but I hope you're, uh, you feel in the midst of that and all the things that we're facing as we start this new year that we can keep our minds focused on this right now, that we should be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. And what I wanna leave us with uh, as we talk about prayer is that what a great place to start this new year. And hopefully you would have seen in the email that went out uh, just before Christmas, that we really wanna call us as a body of people uh, to pray earnestly as we start this new year with all that's going on around us. What better thing to do than to get before God and to groan with the Holy Spirit and to ask and to pray that Holy Spirit prayer, your kingdom come God, your new creation start to break in, in uh, where we see affliction and where we see decay around us. So on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of this week, we have lots of opportunities to pray. We're calling us as a body to gather together 8 a.m. in the morning, 1 p.m. at lunchtime, and then 8 p.m. in the evening. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're going to be on Zoom. We're going to be coming together. We're going to be crying out to God as we start this new year that his kingdom would come amongst us, that we would be strong, that we would be a blessing to one another, but also that um, 
as it says in Psalm 23, that our cup would overflow and that the new kingdom would start to come and break in through us as we're filled with the spirit and we overflow to those around us and we become kingdom bringers around us in all sorts of different ways. So can we gather to pray? I want to call us, even if you've never prayed on Zoom before, there's been this engine room of Zoom prayer that's been going on all through the pandemic, which has just been absolutely amazing. Um, come and join that if you've never been part of it before. You don't have to know what to pray because the spirit is going to groan with us. OK, but come and let's join together and pray and seek God as we start this new year and pray together. Let God, let Jesus, let your kingdom come. Let the certainties that we know overflow in hope also to, the, to those around us in these days. Amen. Um, I'd love us to be at this point as we start, I'd love us to be. Let's pray for our prayer even, right? Yeah. Let's pray that we be great prayers, uh, that we would be faithful in prayer. It's such a key thing. It's such a key part of being God's people. So yeah, Father, we come before you today. We love you. We thank you for the certainty and the hope that we have in you. Thank you that our hope in you, as that famous hymn says, is steadfast and certain, gone through the curtain and touching the throne. Lord, we thank you that we have this amazing steadfast hope right now and we uh, we put our feet firmly on it today lord but we pray right now that we would be faithful and that we'll be patient in affliction and that this week particularly lord that you cause us again to be faithful in prayer lord we pray stir us right now stir us as your people lord stir us to be prayers stir us to be usher ushers in of the new kingdom lord stir us to be those who pray let your kingdom come lord stir us lord to be those who overflow with hope um, and with thankfulness and with certainty to those around us lord and with love and with compassion father as we gather this week as your people we pray that you would put a new zeal in us lord that we wouldn't let go of our spiritual fervor like paul says lord that we would be strong in zeal and Lord, we, we pray that you would teach us to pray. And Lord, even when we don't have the words that you would groan with us by your spirit. But we want to be those who are gathered, calling on your name and praying, let your kingdom come amongst us. Father, I want to pray this morning for anyone who feels afflicted in whatever way, Lord, who's battling circumstances right now. Father, I pray right now again that you would descend upon them. Your hand would be upon them by your spirit. You would fall on each one of us. And Lord, even as we're praying as a body this week, Lord, that your, your presence would be made real to us and come close to us. And Lord, that uh, you would come and do amazing things in and amongst us. We pray for healing. Lord, those who have coronavirus amongst us as a body right now, we pray, be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, where there's those who need comfort, we pray, bring comfort by your spirit. Lord, where there's those who... Uh, need peace in the midst of fear father we pray break fear and let your peace come lord we're looking to you at the start of this new year you are our great hope jesus we worship you and we pray lead us forward in your mighty name amen